let's get your renders ready in post-production just with Blender. Because Blender has some awesome settings and compositing tools that typically only present in pro software such as DaVinci Resolve Studio and Premiere Pro. But Blender got it all for free. Let's get started. This is one of my scenes. I just changed the camera position to have a different angle to get a new shot. And if we leave everything by default and hit render, we will have this. I mean, it's not bad, but we can improve it a lot. And the first thing is pretty obviously, and probably most of you know it, but if you switch to rendering and go to your render properties and go all the way down to the color management, in the view transform, never choose standard, choose filmic. And the look, in most cases, high contrast works pretty well, and even this makes a huge difference. The second thing is switch to your output properties and change the aspect ratio. Most cinematic movies are shoot in this aspect ratio. If you want this resolution, choose 1920 and 810. Then go to your viewer layer properties, enable mist, ambient occlusion and shadow. Also select your camera, go to the object data properties and enable depth of field and select the object you want to be in focus. If the object is large and you just want to focus a specific point of this object, create an empty, move it to the place you need and select the empty, like me. And if you can't see it in the viewport, go to your viewport shading and select depth of field. Also, this is a little bit too blurry because this drone is very close to the camera, so we can increase the f-stop until the background is blurry but not too blurry. Just play around, it depends on your scene. And if you have an animation, go back to your render properties and enable motion blur. It gives a more realistic sense of movement. Okay, now we set it up our scene and we can hit render again. Let's switch to the compositing. And the first thing we need is a viewer node. And of course, turn on use nodes. Now we have our image visible in the background. And because we selected the mist, shadow and ambient occlusion option in our view layer properties, we have it available in the render layer. But first, let's start with the color grading or better color correction. Search for color balance, duplicate it and switch the second one to offset power slope and now it depends on the render vibe you want to achieve. If you have a desert landscape, you want that your render have an orange or a yellow tone. But in my case, it's in space, it's cold, it's dark. There's a little bit of horror. I want to have a bluish dark tone in my render. So I will change the gamma value and I like to have the same color for the gain value. So just copy the hex code and paste it. There we go. Switch to our second color balance and increase the slope slider just a bit. Now search for color correction. And now we can desaturate the shadow of your render because the shadow is also turned to the color you have chosen. And we can do this with this value. Let's add some glow to our lights. Search for a glare node. Switch it to fog glow. For the quality level choose high and increase the size to 9 and decrease the mix value to a negative number to get rid of this. And now we need some lens distortion. In DaVinci Resolve for example, you need the studio version for this. So that's pretty awesome. Plug it between the glare node and the viewer node. Select fit and just a very small number for the distortion effect and for the dispension. That gives even more focus to the primary area in your render. We need a vignette or I don't know how to call this. But if we try to search for it, you see there's no option for it. We will do it with a ellipse mask and an alpha over node. Plug your original image to the mask and the mask to the alpha over factor. And of course we need something to blur out this mask. So search for a blur node. Set it to fast Gaussian, relative, Y and something like 0.5. Also increase this value to 0.8 and the height to 0.45. Plug the lens distortion to the bottom image slot and put the alpha over node into our viewer node. And for the first image slot, change the color to black. But that's a little bit too much, so let's increase the width to 0.95 and this one too. Yes, perfect. And now we will add our mist, shadow and ambient occlusion. Search for a color ramp, duplicate it two times and plug in the mist, shadow and ambient occlusion into the factor of the color ramps. Also search for a mix node and we will start with our mist setup, set the mix node to add, plug the original image to the top and the color ramp to the bottom. And to see what's going on, plug it to our viewer node, 
directly. And you can see in the background, that's what our mist setup looks like. But we need to adjust it a little bit. Let's increase the black value a little bit because it's too much. Let's hide it to see the difference. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. Let's get our shadows done. Duplicate the mix node, set it to overlay and plug the output of the first mix node into the first image slot of the overlay node and the color ramp of the shadow to the bottom one. Let's decrease the factor to 0.35 and increase the black value just a little bit. Now it's time for the ambient occlusion. So duplicate this mix overlay node again, set it to multiply, put the color ramp to the bottom one and the output of the mix overlay node to the image slot of the first one. Also connect it to the viewer node again, increase the black value just a little bit and turn down the factor even more. Now let's plug it to the first color balance node so we can see what we have done. And now we can do some final adjustments depending on whatever you want to achieve. For example, in my case, I will increase the slope value slider even more to get it a bit more bright. And if you think you are done, select all the edit nodes, move them up so you can see your image and you can now press M to mute all nodes to see the difference without compositing and with compositing. And that's how you can use Blender like a professional editing and post-production software like DaVinci Resolve Studio and Premiere Pro and other softwares like this. And Blender have a bunch of settings and notes to increase this even more. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.